Hello everyone, Hyper here, and today's video will be a guide to both the Unholy and the Frost DK in the Shadowlands pre-patch. I wasn't going to make a guide for the pre-patch, but we still don't have a release date for Shadowlands, so I guess pre-patch is gonna be around for a while, so I might as well tell you what's decent to play for both Unholy and Frost. Starting off with the Unholy DK. Keep in mind this guide will be super basic, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. Um, I'll just cover what to play as far as talents, essences, very basic rotation um, since it is the pre-patch and doesn't really matter what you play as long as you're having fun, I guess. Um, so for Unholy DK, the talents are pretty straightforward on single target and in slight cleave. So basically in the raids, you want to play All Will Serve, then Unholy Blight, Asphyxiate, um, or Grip of the Dead. You can pretty much go either one. Then we have Soul Reaper, Wraith Walk. Unholy Pact, and Army of the Damned. This talent build has very good synergy with the Azerite traits that we're going to go with, which is Triple Heart of Darkness and the Triple Magus of the Dead. So with the Army of the Damned talent, plus the Triple Magus of the Dead, plus for the Azerite Essences, we have Vision of Perfection Major. You're essentially going to be able to press Apocalypse on about a 40-45 second cooldown. So this means that your Apocalypse, your Unholy Blight, and your Dark Transformation are all going to sync up pretty much every time you use them. And you're also going to be able to cast Army more often with this build. Uh, but the most important part is just summoning as many Magus of the Dead as possible because they do a lot of damage. Um, so this talent build pretty much just revolves around that. For Azerite Essence Miners, um, you can go with Crucible Flame. Memory of Lucid Dreams, and then for the third one, you can either go with Breath of the Dying or Essence of the Focusing Iris. The difference between the two is pretty minor, um, so honestly, just play whichever one you prefer. So for gearing and your stats, you want to go as much mastery as possible since they changed our mastery to now also affect our pets. Um, we get a lot more value out of mastery than we did in the past, so going just as much mastery as you can, then haste um, is the play for the pre-patch. And then after those two, pretty much whatever stats you get between crit and verse, you just take. Um, but primarily, just try to go as much mastery as possible. For trinkets, in the raid, you can go the Vita Charge Titan Shard and the Humming Black Dragon Scale. Or if you want an unused trinket, you can also take the Vital of Animated Blood from Underrot. For Mythic Plus, this build will change slightly as you will want to take Infected Claws. Bursting Swords, and the last here you will want to take Unholy Assault. And then for your Azerite traits, you will want to go with Triple Heart of Darkness and Triple Fester Might instead of the Magus of the Dead. This is because in Mythic Plus you get a lot more uh, wounds overall, so you get a little bit more value on AoE and Cleave out of Fester Might than you do from Magus. And then for your Azerite Essence, you want to change out your Major from Vision of Perfection to Blood of the Enemy. This build will play largely the same way as it did in BFA, uh, minus the fact that Unholy Assault behaves a little bit different than Unholy Frenzy did. But other than that, it's pretty much the same build and you play it largely the same way. The rotation with the raid build on single target is pretty straightforward and a lot of people put way too much value on the opener. Pretty much as long as you've cast all your cooldown abilities in the opener, you're pretty much good to go. What I usually do is cast Dark Transformation as I'm running in, then cast two Festering Strikes, then I go into Unholy Blight, Army of the Dead, Apocalypse, and from there you just do the default rotation of building wounds with Festering Strike, spending them with Scourge Strike, and then using your Runic Power on a Death Coil or if you get any Sudden Doom procs. Um, and assuming you're doing everything correctly and you're playing Vision of Perfection Major, your Dark Transformation, your Unholy Blight, and your Apocalypse should pretty much line up to use all together about 45 seconds into the fight. Okay, so let me show you what this actually looks like. Again, we run in, we want to Dark Transformation as we run in, then Double Fester Might, Unholy Blight, Army of the Dead, Apocalypse, and then from there you just pretty much build wounds, spend them, your Virulent Plague will fall off one time and you'll have to refresh it by pressing Outbreak. And then the second time um, your Unholy Blight should be back up, so then you're able to refresh it with that. Um, and then keep in mind that once the target gets to 35% health, 
you will want to start using Soul Reaper um, every single time it's off cooldown. But while the target is above 35% health, you don't need to worry about that at all. All right, next, moving on to the Frost DK. So you're pretty much going to play the default Breath of Sindragosa build that we were playing in Nihilota to begin with, um, minus a few tweaks here and there. So for talents, you will take Cold Heart. In the second row, you can either take Murder, Sufficiency, or Runic Continuation. Um, I feel like Murder, Sufficiency is slightly better if you have Triple, Frozen Tempest, whereas RA tends to be a little bit better if you only have one Frozen Tempest or no Frozen Tempests. Um, then in the Utility row, it doesn't matter. In level 35 row, you take Frozen Pulse. Level 45 row, Gathering Storm. And in the last row, obviously, Breath of Syndragosa. So for Azerite traits, you will want to take as many Frozen Tempests as you can. Um, if you have the shoulders that uh, you need to roll that don't come from the raid, you can have Triple Frozen Tempest, tripe, Triple Heart of Darkness. However, if you don't have those, then you will probably have two Frozen Tempests, one Icy Citadel, and then Triple Heart of Darkness. But pretty much just prioritize um, Frozen Tempest over Heart of Darkness over Icy Citadel and just make the best build you can. For stats, you want to go as much mastery and as much crit as you can. Um, haste and versatility are almost irrelevant, so if they end up being on like a mastery piece, then you take it if there's no crit on it, but otherwise we just go for as much mastery and crit as possible. For trinkets, um, I still recommend playing double on use with the font of power and the PvP trinket. Or if you don't have the PvP trinket, you might be able to also substitute in the Underwrought trinket. For Azerite Essences, you play what you were playing before pretty much, Blood of the Enemy Major, and then for Miners, you take Lucid and Conflict and Strife. Um, and then for the third Miner, you take Crucible. Since Frost DK got a bunch of abilities taken off the global cooldown, you will end up with a Mega Macro like this. Uh, where you want to add Breath of Syndragosa, Empower Rune Weapon, Pillar of Frost, Raise Dead, and your second on use trinket. Um, so that's a lot of things. The second on use trinket you end up using after Breath of Syndragosa starts anyway, so it doesn't necessarily need to be in there. But at some point where we will only use one trinket, uh, it's just good to have the macro. Now let me show you real quick how the Frost Decay rotation goes. It plays exactly the way it did before. You want to channel your font of power before combat. Then once the pull timer starts, you are going to want to run in, do three obliterates. If you get any Rhyme procs, use them. After you've done three obliterates, you go ahead and use the Breath of Syndragosa macro, then Remorseless Winter, and start spamming those obliterates and use procs as you get them. Now, whenever your on use trinket is up, go ahead and use it and use Blood of the Enemy. And then before your pillar runs out, you're going to want to uh, press your Cold Heart and your Frostworm's Fury. I know I missed it there because I was talking and I was trying to keep up with the rotation as well as explaining what's going on. But pretty much you just want to use your Cold Heart two seconds before Pillar runs out and your Frostworm's Fury a second before Pillar runs out. Um, there is a little bit of min-maxing you can do with like Fallen Crusader procs and stuff like that. But overall for pre-patch, I would say just don't worry about it and just you know, run in and just do it the exact same way to get used to it. And then once we move into Shadowlands and you're comfortable with the rotation, uh, then you can go ahead and start min-maxing those things. Okay, so for abilities that we got in the pre-patch, um, we have Lichborn, Raise Dead, and AMZ. All three are really good abilities. Obviously, Raise Dead, you just macro into your offensive cooldowns. Lichborn, really good. If you're doing a lot of damage, you're going to be leeching for quite a bit of damage, so pretty nice to have. Um, and AMZ, really good to use for raid defensive uh, value. In the pre-patch, nothing really hits hard enough to need AMZ, but get used to having it on your bars and actually pressing it. So that covers the pre-patch guide for both the Frost and the Unholy DK. I hope you guys like it and you're having fun playing the pre-patch. Unfortunately, two-handed frost is not a thing in pre-patch. You need to wait until level 58, I believe, is when you get Killing Machine rank 2. And that is where two-handed frost will actually start doing something, um, as well as obliterate rank 2. Until you have those two passives, two-handed frost is just not a thing. Um, and I also didn't talk about rune forges at all, because you still run the same rune forges as you did before, even though we got three new ones. 
um, they're currently irrelevant to both of the DK specs. Thank you so much for watching this video and if you enjoyed it, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to support my work, you can check out my Patreon, which is linked in the description box. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.